How can we build ARIMA models for time series forecasting? This tutorial will get you started in Python with an example, step by step. I'll show you what is ARIMA, how to create the model in Python, both manually and automatically. Then we'll use the model for time series forecasting and evaluate the results. By the end, you'll be able to predict your own time series with the new techniques learned. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome to Just Into Data, where data science materials are shared and made simpler for you. Before diving into the example in Python, let's learn about what is ARIMA. ARIMA, which stands for Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average, is a general class of statistical models for time series analysis forecasting. When applying ARIMA models, we use a time series past values and or forecast errors to predict its future values. There is also one important assumption of ARIMA. Before building ARIMA models, we want to check whether the time series is stationary, which means whether the time series has its statistical properties remaining constant across time. The reason why we want a stationary time series is because it's easier to model and make predictions. Here's an example stationary time series plot. You can see that it has no clear trend. The data just oscillates around a mean of zero with constant variance. So the ARIMA model can actually be broken down into three components, AR, I, and MA, with its corresponding parameters, P, D, and Q. These three parameters take non-negative integer values indicating which specific ARIMA model is used. For different time series, we might be able to fit them with any of the combinations of these three components of ARIMA. That's why we say ARIMA is a general class of models. All right, now let's take a closer look at each of these three components. AR stands for autoregressive. It means that the time series can be linearly regressed on its own past values. The parameter corresponding to the AR part is P. As you can see in this formula, P represents the number of past values included in the AR model. Here, C is a constant, phi1 to phi p are parameters, and epsilon t is white noise. Next, the I part, which stands for integrated. As mentioned earlier, we want the time series to be stationary for ARIMA models. So if it's not stationary, the time series can be differenced to become stationary by computing the differences between consecutive observations. For example, the first order differencing is calculated as this. The corresponding parameter D represents the number of times the time series is differenced. The third part, MA, moving average, means a time series can be regressed on the past forecast errors. As shown in this equation, the parameter Q represents the number of past forecast errors included in the MA model, or the size of the moving average window. This is named the moving average model since each YT can be considered as a weighted moving average of the past forecast errors. So in summary, the components AR and MA are two models that usually work on stationary time series. If the time series is not stationary, we can use the I part to make it stationary. Let's put the three components together. The full model equation of ARIMA PDQ is this. This delta YT is a differenced time series, which could be more than one time differencing. So based on different values of parameters, the ARIMA models could be AR model only because ARIMA P00 is equivalent to ARP, or MA model only because ARIMA 00Q is equivalent to MAQ, or a combination of ARMA model without differencing, or ARIMA. ARIMA is a general class of models. These might sound a little confusing, but it should become more clear with our example. Let's dive into our example in Python. I'll use JupyterLab to demonstrate this tutorial. In this notebook, 
I've divided the process into different steps. Step zero, explore the data set. We'll use a time series that records the traffic to our website just into data.com. Here's the data set. Due to privacy, I've removed the actual date information. Our target is to build an ARIMA model in Python that can predict the next 30 periods of time traffic. Back to the notebook. The first thing to do is always plot the time series and see its pattern. In this code, df stores a time series with 393 data points, and we can see its plot here. You can see that this time series' variance doesn't look constant throughout time. For example, here is less, and here is more. So first, let's transform the series to stabilize its variance. We can take the logarithm to do this, and print out the transformed series plot. You can see that the plot is less varianced across time compared to the original one. Now let's also split the time series into training and test sets. Here we set the last 30 data points as a test set and the previous data as a training set. Now we're ready to consider how to fit an ARIMA model in Python. In step one, we check for stationarity of time series. As mentioned earlier, we usually apply ARIMA models on stationary time series. This means we must check whether a time series has its statistical properties staying approximately the same throughout time. There are different ways of checking whether the time series is stationary. Method number one, time series plot. Many time series are obviously non-stationary. We can tell by looking at their plots. From the previous step, we can see that our time series has a strong upward trend, so it's non-stationary. When your time series is harder to judge, we can use other methods. Method number two, ACF plot and PACF plot. These two plots are helpful throughout the process of fitting ARIMA models. So let's take a closer look at them. The ACF stands for autocorrelation function is a correlation of the time series with its lags. It measures the linear relationship between lagged values of the time series. For example, we can measure the autocorrelation of yt and yt minus k for different values of k. ACF is straightforward to measure, but in reality, the relationships among lags are more complicated. For example, let's think about this question. Assume that yt and yt minus 1 are correlated, and yt minus 1 and yt minus 2 are also correlated. Due to both of their correlations with yt minus 1, yt and yt minus 2 must also be correlated. How can we measure if there's new information in yt minus 2 to predict yt besides the relationships with yt minus 1? That's why we need another definition called partial autocorrelations. The PACF, partial autocorrelation function, shows the partial correlation of the time series with its legs after removing the effects of lower order legs between them. For example, the partial autocorrelation of yt and yt minus k is a correlation that is not explained by the relationships with the legs yt minus 1, yt minus 2, all the way to yt minus k plus 1. It measures a balance amount of variance in yt minus k to predict the future value of yt. Back to the notebook. Let's use the stats models Python package to plot the ACF and PACF of our time series training set. There you go. The ACF plot shows that the correlations with the legs are high and positive with very slow decay, while the PACF plot shows the partial autocorrelations having a single spike at lag 1. These are both signs of a well-known time series called random walk, which is not stationary. Besides plots, we can also check for stationarity with statistical tests 
like the ADF test. ADF, augmented Dickey-Fuller tests, test for the null hypothesis that there is a unit root, so non-stationarity. This result shows a large p-value, which means a test fails to reject the null hypothesis. So the ADF test also suggests that our time series is non-stationary. With all the evidence above, let's transform our time series to a stationary one. As mentioned earlier, we can use different sing to make a non-stationary time series to be stationary. It helps to stabilize the mean of the time series by removing changes in the levels of the series. Let's try it out on the training dataset and plot the new series. We are using the current observation minus the previous observation to get the new series. We also use the drop NA method since the first observation has no previous observation to subtract, so its difference is missing. You can see that the first difference time series doesn't show a strong trend anymore. It looks to be more stationary. We can also look at the ACF and PACF plots of the first difference time series, DF train diff. Compared to the original series, the ACF plot drops in value more quickly. The time series is less correlated to its leg, while the PACF plot also shows a less strong spike at leg one. These are signs of the series being more stationary. We can also quantify the result by running the ADF test on the series. This p-value is small enough to reject the null hypothesis at a 5% significance level. So we can conclude that our first difference time series is likely to be stationary. This is good. If your first difference time series still shows a strong non-stationary pattern, you can try applying the difference a second time, which means the difference on the first difference time series. Most of the time, we should not go beyond second order differences. Now we've successfully figured out the I part in the RIMA model. We set the parameter D to be one. Next, in step two, we'll determine the other two Ariba model parameters, P and Q. They determine the models that we'll be using from Ariba. We can again use the ACF and PACF plots. We're going to model based on the first difference time series. So let's go back and look at the plots of DF train diff again. Based on these plots, we can select the initial values of P and Q. Here's a rule of thumb for selecting the values of P and Q. If the PACF plot has a significant spike at leg P, but not beyond, and the ACF plot decays more gradually, this may suggest an ARIMA PD0 model. If the ACF plot has a significant spike at leg Q, but not beyond, and the PACF plot decays more gradually, this may suggest an ARIMA 0 DQ model. This is because the PACF measures the balance variance of the lag. It helps tell us whether we should include such lag within the autoregressive AR model. While the ACF measures the correlations with the lags, it helps judge the moving average MA models. Most of the time, we should focus on either the AR or the MA models, but not mixed. For our difference series, the PACF has a large spike at leg one and still shows more minor but significant legs at two, four, and five. In contrast, the ACF shows a more gradual decay, so it satisfies the first condition. We can try for ARIMA models with the p-parameter being two, three, four, or even five. Let's try two since we usually prefer a simpler model. So we'll fit an ARIMA 210 model. As you can see, it can be hard and highly subjective to select appropriate values for the parameters of ARIMA models. You may try multiple models to find the best one for your needs. After deciding the parameters of P, D, and Q, we can fit the ARIMA model in Python. We'll use the classic Python package stats models. Note that its function will apply the difference for us, so we're fitting the model using the original training set, dftrain, with
with parameters of 2, 1, and 0. Next, let's use this model to make predictions. Before using this model to make time series predictions, we need to make sure our model has captured adequate information from the data. We can check this by looking at the residuals. If the model is good, its residuals should look like white noise. We'll plot the residuals and their density. The residuals look random in general, and their density looks normally distributed with a mean of around zero. We can also look at the ACF and PACF plots of the residuals. The lower legs barely show any significant spikes. These show that the residuals are close to white noise. We're ready to forecast with the RIMA model with parameters 2, 1, 0. Let's calculate the predictions in Python and plot them together with the actual series, including the test set. You can see that the forecast follows the previous momentum and shows an upward trend, while in reality, the traffic fell at first before heading back up. It's pretty challenging to make time series predictions. You've done a lot of work. It takes effort to identify a good combination of parameters of ARIMA models. The good news is that there are Python packages that provide functions to fit ARIMA models automatically. Let's try the PMD ARIMA Python package. It offers automatic ARIMA modeling based on the stats model library that we've been using. So we'll start from the training set DF train we've obtained in step zero when exploring the data set. The auto ARIMA function can help us automate the steps to fit an ARIMA model. It will generate the optimal model based on its criteria. We also set two of its parameters to be false, so that it will consider all possible non-seasonal models. Note that when applying the auto ARIMA function, it's still mandatory to perform step zero we've done at the beginning to explore the data set. It returns the model ARIMA 510. We can also print out its summary. By default, the auto process uses a KPSS unit root test to select the value of parameter D then uses the AIC information criteria to determine the values of P and Q. You can change the methods by setting them within the function AutoArima. Please read more about the function in its documentation. I'll put a link in the description. As you can see, the auto-fitting process is simple, but based on current technology, the automatic process can't completely replace our judgment. So please use the auto process cautiously and make the final decision based on your experience. Now we have two ARIMA models, ARIMA 210 and the auto-fitted ARIMA 510. Let's compare and evaluate their predictions. Note that before forecasting, we should also check the residuals of the auto-fitted ARIMA model with parameters 510. But in this tutorial, I'll skip the process. First, if we plot both models' predictions together, you can see that the manually fitted model of ARIMA 210 is closer to the actual test set. Also, we can use common metrics to evaluate these time series model predictions in Python. Here, we're using the MAE, mean absolute error, MAPE, mean absolute percentage error, and RMSE, root mean squared error. We calculate these sets of metrics for both of the models. You can see that based on our test set, the manually fitted model, ARIMA 210, is better with lower errors. So the best model picked by the automatic process might not give better predictions on the test data set. Finally, I would like to mention a couple of tips for a time series prediction example. First, we've only completed the model assessment on one split of training and test sets. In reality, you want to conduct time series cross-validation to select the best model. ARIMA models can also accommodate seasonality. Learn more about seasonal ARIMA models. Certain events would impact the website traffic. 
For example, posting of new articles. Those new variables could improve the time series prediction as well. That's it. In this tutorial, you've successfully built ARIMA time series models and made predictions in Python, both by selecting your own parameters and using an automatic function. Did you learn something new in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below this video right now. If you're interested in more data science tutorials and courses, please head over to our website, justintodata.com. Thank you and see you in the next video.